All right, today's video, we're gonna be going over the notorious two-stroke injection pump, oil injection. Now, a lot of people wanna bypass their oil injection pump, but what I've seen and read about, these things are pretty reliable. There's only really a few things that can go wrong with it. I've had this one apart, and you'll see in a later video, I'll do another one where I show how to actually rebuild the check valves and take care of that. Um, I have brand new check valves for it, so I'm going to be replacing those and putting this back into service. Now, if you're wondering, if you don't know if your injector pump works before you start a sled, first thing you want to do is mix up some, pre, uh, some pre-mix, you know, 50 to 1, 40 to 1, something a little heavy on the oil if you haven't started it. This sled is an 86 Arctic Cougar that I've been riding with no problems. Um, I got this sled. It, who knows how long it has been since it started, but it has 1,200 miles on it. So it's uh, the internals of the engine are pretty good. I've gone through it and rebuilt the carburetors a few times and learned the ins and outs of it. But I'm going to show you right now how you can bypass your injector pump and leave it in place. Now this is not only going to bypass it, so you run premix on your fuel, but it's also going to allow you to tell whether or not your injector pump works in the first place. Um, what you're going to notice is this is a two cylinder and I've got two check valves one which is right here uh, you'll notice it because it'll have a if I had these all off you would see that it has a small like one eighth of an inch barb coming off of the uh, the check valve and it is in fact a check valve it's a one way check valve that keeps oil allows oil to flow out of the pump but it's not supposed to let it drain back down into the pump um, some sleds, people say that the injector pump actually cools the crankshaft bearings uh, through a, a separate part inside, but this does not. I know that because I've had it apart and there's no sprayer. There's no, there's no internal connection between the oil that comes from the tank and the oil that leaves. It doesn't, doesn't lubricate anything, so I could disconnect this and let it fly or do whatever I wanted to it. But... What I did here is one of the nipples broke off, so I needed a new check valve. Now I knew that um, I wanted to test it. So what I did is I replaced the line between the oil tank. Let me go around the other side, you might be able to see it. I replaced the line between the oil tank here. And you'll see it if you look down. Here it is right here. How well you can see it probably can't see it at all but anyway it's a brand new tube from the oil tank to the oil pump from the check valves you'll see this line right here this is one of them and there's another one down low that simply goes to a T both the check valves are connected to this now I used clear tubing because I wanted to see the action of it when I actually fired the sled and all I did is ran a return line out of that T right back to here to a hole that I drilled in the top of the tank that allows me to not only just watch the oil as it pumps through, but I can also watch it drip right out of the tube and get a feel for how it's, how it's pumping. Oil injection varies the gas ratio, the gas oil ratio, uh, from anywhere from 20 to 1 to 101 to 100 to 1, excuse me. Um, a couple of pros and cons about oil injection versus pre-mix. Um, oil injection, your motor's going to run the way it should, the way it was designed to from the factory. If you bypass your oil injection and you pre-mix, maybe people don't know this, a lot of people do, I'm sure, who are hardcore sledders, but when you throw oil into that gas, you immediately lean your engine. Your carburetors are not jetted to uh, for oil gas mix in an injection sled. It's it's jetted for straight gas, not oil. Oil will slow down the flow through this. It thickens it up. What happens is you start running leaner, which means you run hotter. Which means you, you know, even though you're getting oil, your, your sled's going to run hotter. And the hotter it runs, the less horsepower you're going to get. It's just that simple. So, uh, I'm going to put this back to oil injection. 
I got the parts for the injector pump, two brand new check valves, two, two uh, brand new banjo bolts, and gaskets for the between the oil pump to the block, gaskets for the uh, banjo connections. Now what I'll do is I will still run a premix, but the tubing that I have that's going to come from the check valves is going to be clear going up, so I can actually see the flow. I want to make sure that I have flow coming out of that pump when I put the new check valves on there. I already know I do, but visual is always a good thing to see. It's always a good thing to see it. And again, make sure you clamp all your lines nice and tight. You don't want any leaks because that and that equals uh, burnt up engines. So we'll get into. Uh, I'm going to do another video where I take the injector pump off, and we'll go right through it. And, I'll show you how I put new check valves on it, what to look for and what not to look for. And, uh, yeah, that's some of the pros and cons of oil injection. And I'll also do a video how to adjust the connection here because mine's loose. Um, my nut came off the bottom. I'm glad I wasn't running oil injection when this happened. That's going to get a little Loctite once I get it set right. I'll Loctite that baby in place so it doesn't budge. It's a good idea. Um... All right, let's get let's get on to it. Next video.